Good evening, everybody. All right. Tonight, uh, we've got the great pleasure of having Hubert Centers back with us. The reason it's good to see what Hubert does is because he is a professional trader, and this is his stuff. So, uh, I mean, it's been developed and fine-tuned, and he knows exactly what to do with it. And he's very successful with it. So with that, uh, Hubert, welcome back to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious to see what you got for us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to make sure that my microphone's working. I know we always do these tests ahead of time. And you should be able to see my slide. Do you see a big, like a big blue eye? And can you hear my voice? And then I'll get started here. So we're good, we're good, okay. All right, cool. So just a quick informal survey. Has anybody seen uh, this webinar before? Uh, the one where I teach you how to risk $156 in order to potentially make 1000 okay? So all right, so we've got mixed. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. All right, so perfect. All right, so <clears throat> I have to read a disclaimer. Now, I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'm registered. Now, by registration, I don't want to blow smoke up your rear end and make you think I know how to do something that you don't know how to do since I'm registered. I'm registered because it gives me the ability to pay very low commissions, basically no commissions really. Um, and the reason I did that is I wanted to have the cheapest possible transaction cost that I could have in trading because a lot of it is uh, when you're trading, if you do a lot of round turns or if you do a lot of in and outs, uh, a lot of the commissions will eat up your profits if, if you're if you're trading sideways. So. I am a Series 3 and a Series 30, which means I had to take a test, and I had to pass it with a 70. Now, this is the sad thing. I had to take it two or three times before I passed that bad boy. All right, so tonight, so at least you'll know, like, what type of guy you're learning from tonight, right? So um, <clears throat> how to risk only $156.25 to potentially make $1,000. You're going to hear me say the word potentially a lot. It may get on your nerves. Uh, the reason I have to say it is because I am registered and I don't want to go uh, to prison or be fined by the CFTC or the NFA because I don't think me and Bubba in an orange jumpsuit in a tight, confined cell would work very well for me. So that's why I say probably and potentially a lot. All right, so let's get started. So warning, everybody got to do the disclaimer since I'm registered. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, some hypothetical and s simulated Performance results, I'm also going to show you some trades that I've actually taken myself too, okay? When I teach you the strategies, I'm going to teach you tonight, number one, I'm going to make them perfect so that they're very easy to understand, all right? I'm going to teach you too if I have enough time, and I should have enough time, and I'll stay to the end until every single one of your questions are answered, and then at the end of the webinar, I'm actually going to throw on a couple of trades, okay? I'm going to actually trade the strategy that I teach you here today. I'll just do it in the after hours market, and believe it or not, I trade that market in after hours a lot anyway, so it'll be perfect follow through. So disclaimer, trading can be hazardous to your wealth. You're probably going to lose all your money. Uh, you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. Always trade with discretionary income that will not affect your lifestyle. This is for big boys and big girls. This is risky what we do for a living. I like to go above and beyond and say, hey, it's probably going to end. Your trading career may end like a bad country song. Your wife's going to leave you. Your kids are going to hate you. Uh, your dog's going to die, and they're going to repossess your your car, and your home. Does everybody understand the disclaimer that this stuff is risky and you have to give it a lot of respect? Now, I say that as as serious as I can. I take what I do very serious. I just don't take myself very serious because life is too short. So that's the disclaimer. My name is Hubert Center, spelled with an S. Kind of weird. I think my grandfather got mad because it's spelled with a C and just one night decided he's going to put an S on instead of a C. I'm kind of known in the business as the no BS approach to trading and investing. I'm kind of the guy that's labeled as, I call them how I see them. Sometimes it gets me in trouble with exchanges, sometimes not. It just all depends on what's going on. All right, so it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have fun. It's in the evening. It's 8 o'clock. There's no sense in us being so serious. Like I said, I take what I do for a living very serious. I've been a professional trader for 22 plus years. I've been in the education business for 12 or 15 years, all right? So I'm going to try to give you some really good informa information in this webinar, but we're also going to have fun while we do it, okay? Um, so with that said, let's dig into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, is, is, number one, I'm going to be teaching you a future strategy, all right? So I don't know what everybody trades. It looks like there's almost 500 people in here, 498 people. 
what do you trade? Do you trade stocks, options, futures, forex, commodities, gold, crude? Bond? Like for me, myself in particular, I trade everything. And if I thought I could make money on trading Tic Tacs or toothpicks, I would do it. Okay. The 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 webinar, the information I'm going to share with you tonight is going to be specifically about the futures markets. Okay. Now, if you've never traded futures, hang in there with me. I'm going to actually give you a futures one-on-one course as we go along and take all of the scary parts away from it, okay? So now, if you trade stocks or options, which I trade stocks and options too, what is the thing that keeps you up at night? What is the, what's the big risk, okay? What's the big, what's the big risk if you trade stocks or options when your head hits the pillow at night? What are you scared about? What's the big thing? That's right, gaps, right? You're like, Oh, please, dear God, do not gap up in the wrong direction tomorrow and blast past my stop losses and just destroy me. And right? Does everybody, anybody that trades stocks and options ever feel that way? Like you're like, oh, my God, it's earning season. I'm short Facebook. Now it's killing me. I was short this. Now it's gapping up or I was long. So that's one of the things. So if you trade stocks and options, a small futures account is really a very smart thing to do. Okay. And here's why I say that. Let's go through an example. And let's say you're long, it doesn't really matter what stock. Let's say, let's say you're long Apple, A-A-P-L, or A-A-P-L, or Facebook. It doesn't really matter, right? Can everybody see what I'm drawing on the screen? So let's say that your bet is you bet that it's going higher. So you're long, all right? Now, what happens is, let's say you see the market closes, and you can see both of these are traded, right? And you see the NASDAQ futures, the NASD futures are just dumping hard. They're going lower. Well, obviously, if you're long Apple or Facebook, those are going to be going lower too, right? Right? Those are going to be going lower too. So if you're in Apple or Facebook and you're betting on them going longer and the NASDAQ's going lower, what you would do is you would short some of the NASDAQ futures and that would hedge some of your losses. All right? Does that make sense? All right, cool. Uh, yep. All right, so let's go on to the next piece. All right. So that's why you want to have at least a small futures account. Even if you don't have a futures account and you trade stocks and options, this is a good way to hedge some of those bad things that can happen to you in the stocks and the options market. All right, so we've covered that. Now, let's go on to, I told you earlier that um, uh, trading could be hazardous to your wealth if you're not careful. What I personally believe, even with that disclaimer, is if you get around other successful and wealthy and driven individuals, some of their information and their knowledge and their brain power will just rub on, off on you. So I've got a collage of pictures up here of some people that I hang out with in mastermind groups. If you don't know what a mastermind group is, it's a group where, it's a group where you guys get together in a conference room and talk about uh, success strategies and business and wealth building and just pretty much everything and you try to help each other. So this one's pretty funny. She's actually, this is Paula Abdul. She's actually about six inches shorter than that because she's got six-inch heels on in this photo as we were in Arizona in our mastermind. This guy's pretty cool. Uh, we always have a chuckle because uh, I, I, every time I see him, I go, hey, man, remember, we both have dyslexia, so we've got to stick together. So you can see here I've got about three or four chins. Uh, this is Mr. Wonderful, obviously, here. He's actually a, a decent guy. He's not as bad as they make him out to seem on the Shark Tank. And then this guy here, this is Dave Ramsey. I help his organization on some of their webinar stuff because they don't know how to do them very well. So uh, I help them out, and uh, I consult with them from time to time. This is me with my big catfish head right here. Uh, this is a monkey suit that I hardly ever wear unless it's for a picture. These are another six 24-inch LCDs, and this is the microphone I'm on right now. So um, congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. You're still going to have to do some work. So a lot of the information that I get from my mastermind buddies, I'm doing the same thing with you. Like I'm going to kind of do a brain dump of a couple of strategies that you can put into play as early as tonight. You're not going to have to buy a course to find out, you know, even more information on these strategies. At the end of it, I will make you a special offer on another course if you want to learn more information. It is not required, okay? I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about these two strategies tonight. If you take good notes, you should be able to go and potentially make money with it, all right? So first, let's do some math, all right? A little math question here. Now, 
if if I was going to show you a trade setup that only worked 41.3% of the time, would you take it? 41.3% of the time, would you take it? be interesting to see how this comes out. Steve says no. Depends. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. Depends. All right. If the return's enough. Depends on return. Yes, maybe. All right, cool. So now remember, what is the name of the presentation? How to risk $156 to potentially make 1000 So if that's the risk to reward ratio, how many times do I have to be right in order for that ratio to come out good for me? Right? Only two to one, right? And if I'm telling you it's good for for four out of ten instead of, you know, two out of ten, you should be willing to take it. So let's go through the math. So we're going to pretend that we have a series of ten trades, all right? So the ten trades, the first six we're going to lose, like loser, 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 loser. Every loss is going to cost us $156.25. That's going to total a loss of $936, right? And you're sitting there going, whoo, man, you're awesome. That's, that's amazing. That's terrible, right? But the risk-to-reward ratio is so good that if we have only four winners in this strategy and they're $1,000 a piece, we're going to come out with a $1,000 profit. You take 936 from 4000 You end up with a net profit of $3,064. Now, if I was going to tell you that the percentage win ratio of this trade is 41.3% of the, of the time, would you be willing to take it now if you knew this is how it came out ahead of time? If you said, okay, it only works 41% of the time, but overall it's going to make me, in a series of 10 trades, it's going to make me $3,000 almost every time. So right, right? So now, that, now the math makes sense in your head, right? AJ still says, no, that's perfect. That's no big deal. I mean, you know, different strokes for different folks. It just all depends on how you trade, right? All right, so now let's say it's worse. Let's say it's, let's say it's worse. Let's say this thing only works three times out of ten. Heads up, most of us professional traders don't get 50-50. If you think most of us get more than 50 to 50, you're just wrong. You're just crazy. Like, if, if I can get the 52%, I'm ecstatic. If I can get 42 to 52%, I'm all over it. If sometimes when I have a trade set up from, if it just gets in a zone and it's like doing like, 70 or 80 percent i know it's not going to last forever and i know it's not going to last over a long period of time but i'm going to hit it hard but you're just like oh man it's really killing it right now so seven losses out of 10 156 times seven is a thousand dollar loss that's in the negative all right we come in we have three winners three thousand dollars at the end of the week we come up and we've got one thousand nine hundred and eight bucks all right out of 10 trades and the commission on this thing this is just trading a one lot a one lot. That's the smallest size you can particularly trade. So for this trade, it's only going to cost us basically, uh, it's, it's only going to cost us five do, $5 for a transaction. That's if you're paying retail. And I never pay retail. I always pay wholesale. All right. So there are five stages playing with numbers theoretically. Yes, we are playing with numbers theoretically. This is the hypothetical part, and then I'll show you how it really works. That's correct. So there's five stages everybody goes through. Everybody hits them at different levels. So first, when you first start learning how to trade, you are very efficient at losing money very quickly and in massive amounts of doses. Anybody been through stage one where you just lose money, lose money, lose money, lose money, and you're like, oh, my God, I would, be, I would do better if I just burned it or threw it out the window, right? And you're like, I thought this was supposed to be fun. This is painful, right? And then you get a little bit of skill under your belt, and you're like, okay, well, now I'm just losing little bits of money, and I'm dying the death of a 1,000 cups. Every time I touch something, it's a loss, but at least it's not a massive loss. Anybody been to stage two, right? So stage three is where a lot of folks kind of get tied up. It's where you learn how to tread water. You make, a, you make a lot of money or you lose a lot of money, or you make a little bit of money, lose a little bit of money. Make a lot, lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, or you make a little, lose a little, lose a little, little. Anybody stuck at stage three? So these two trades that I'm going to show you today are, are designed – to try to get you from stage three to stage four where you can start making consistent cash flow. One of the biggest things that most people mess with and mess up is the next thing, which is you get these three different type of styles, the main three styles. So one, the, the, the main style that people suffer from is they'll have a huge loss, and now they have all this fear tied up with them. As soon as they have a little bit of cash, a little winner, a little winner, they just go ahead and take the profit really quickly. And then they get another huge loss, and they're like, oh, I can't let that happen again. Oh, I'm going to take my $200. Or 
up to 300, 500, oh, 1,000, boom, $6,000 loss. That's style A, and it's painful. Now, style C is where you start, you have a massive loss, and then you also start dying the death of 1,000 cuts. That's painful, too. And you, you, If you're at style C, you definitely have to get some education and learn how to get out of style C. Now, the way I try to personally trade every single trade that I do now, and I'm not perfect, there are no perfect traders, there are no perfect trades. Um, but what I try to do on a daily daily basis is this right here, where I have small loss, small loss, small loss, small loss. Oh, my God, I suck. Small loss, small loss, huge win. That's how I try to trade. Small loss, small loss, small loss, small loss, small loss, small loss, big old runner. So that's what these trades are designed and, and actually designed to do, okay? So that's this strategy, all right? So I'm going to tell you a little story. Anybody know Aesop's fable about the scorpion and the frog? So there's this scorpion and this frog, and they're stuck on this little deserted island. And evidently they have just eaten everything there is to eat on that island. And the scorpion comes over to the frog and says, Hey, man, can you give, let me jump on your back and give me a ride over to the other side. And the frog goes, you've lost your mind. You're just going to sting me and eat me. They keep going back and forth for a little while, and the, and the, and the scorpion's like, no, no, no. I would never do that because after I eat you, I would die anyway because there's nothing else to eat here. I promise I won't do that. He goes, you no, no, it's just not a good idea. I'm just not going to let you do it. Eventually, the frog caves in, and then the scorpion jumps on the frog's back, and as they're swimming halfway across the, the little bay here, right here about halfway, all of a sudden, scorpion stings the frog. The frog looks up and goes, why? Why would you do that? As they both sink to their death. And as they're sinking, the, the scorpion goes, eh, I guess it's in my nature. Right? So if you're trading a market that trades like this, up, down, reverse, stop, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. And you're trying to do a breakout strategy. And if you're trying to do a breakout strategy on that, then you're kind of getting what you deserve a little bit. Like the scorpion is stinging you in the back. You know this is a counter trend trading market, and you're trying to create a breakout strategy on it. That's what's happening to you. Now, if you're a trend trader and you want to buy pullbacks or breakouts, you want a market that goes like this, up, retraces a little, up, retraces a little, up, retraces a little. Or does this strategy right here, up, consolidate, break away, consolidate, break away, and consolidate. So that's what you want to focus on if you're getting stopped out a ton and you're not getting any runners. All right. So what is the best market for you to trade? So if you were going to do a survey and you said, hey, what is one of the bigger, thicker markets out there, what would you trade? A lot of people will probably tell you, like, if you're going to trade, you should try to trade the S&P E-minis, right? And they say that you want to do this because it has the most volume and everyone trades them because it has the most volume. Hmm, that's an interesting way to, to, to come up with a, with a trading strategy where you're trying to make money. You just want to do it because everybody else is doing it, right? So then what happens is you end up trading your stocks or your options or your futures contract, and you trade them, and then you get chopped up, and then you start asking yourself really good quality questions like, why can't I do this? What's wrong with me? And you start going, hey, I'm smart. I'm successful. Uh, I just don't understand this. Uh, it's just too daggone hard. Obviously, it must be rigged, right? Now, there are certain aspects of the market that are not to your advantage, like, you know, the high-frequency trades and stuff, that's not doing you any favors. But if you're not trying to compete with that stuff, it's not really hurting you either. If you're not trying to go for, you know, the micro transactions, the HFTs really don't affect you much at all because you're going to be in it for more than a couple seconds or a couple half a seconds. So now let's move on to talking about how you have been betrayed over time by people just telling you the wrong bits of information. And you may be saying, okay, I don't understand. Don't worry, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Other people have just lied to you, and they didn't even know they were lying to you. So and you're sitting there going, okay, who, who set me up? Who are they? They are other traders, the media, investors, and it gets passed down from generation to generation. Uh, did you test it? Now, you probably know, you probably know that uh, CNBC and Bloomberg are for entertainment purposes only. And what they do is they go, hey, gold's down 20 points. Wonder why. And then they go find a trader and go, oh, Goldman Sachs had a sell order earlier today. 
and it may just they just had one sell order. Somebody else could have dumped way more than this. So be careful when you're listening to CNBC. Now, do you did you believe what they told you on what to trade, or in other words, did you trust it, or did you trust and verify? So my grandfather always told me like you can trust people, just verify what they say if you if you have any you know any spotty sense feelings of hey something may not be right here. So true or false? If you can trade. You can trade any market. Do you believe that? True or false? If you can trade, you should be able to trade any market. So Steve says false, 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 true, 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 false. So we got mixed, right? Now, as a professional trader for 22 plus years, I would say that that's probably true. Now, there's some things that I'm just terrible at trading at, and I try to stay away from. I would say it's true, but it's a lot easier if you trade something that matches your trading style and your personality, right? So it, it depends, like, like you know, if I'm really good trading futures, I'm decent at stocks, and I'm mediocre at options, right? And I'm decent at, you know, other different markets. So what I try to do is always try to stay in the zone of the ones that I'm really, really good at, and I dabble in the rest, okay? Now, if you don't match your trading style to the right market, it's going to be very painful and very frustrating. Has anybody in here tried trading a market, and no matter what you do, it's all losses? Well, if you're trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you, it's like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It's going to feel great once you stop. Okay? Now, think about this statement. What's wrong with trading better faster? Now, I'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme here. I, and heads up, there are no short, there are no shortcuts to long term success, but I can take, teach you some tricks of the trade so it'll shorten your learning curve. Is there any, is there anything wrong with trading better faster? So in other words, if I could show you a way, a process that you could go through and say, all right, I'm going to go through a process, figure out what market's right for me, start testing it, and I'm going to systematically go through the market and say, okay, this market I like better than the others. Do you think you would make more money quicker? Right? You probably would. You, and like if you're trading high beta stocks like Facebook and Apple and Amazon and they're just chopping you up, maybe you need to trade something that's slower and more methodical. Okay? So... Let's talk about how to pick the best market for you to trade. I already know which markets I trade the best. But I want to, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, I'm going to go into the process of trying to teach you, and I'm going to try to sell you on trading a different market that is really good for most people to trade, in my opinion. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the ATR. Does everybody know what the ATR, who does not know what an ATR is? It's a short analogy for average true range. And here's the best thing I can tell you about an average true range. This is a good analogy, ATR. So we're going to pretend that you have been taking flight lessons. It's your second flight lesson, and you're up in a, in a plane with, a, with an old guy. He has a heart attack. He's not dead. He's just passed out, and you don't know how to land this sucker. But you know how to work the radio, and you're like, hey, flight tower, my instructor just passed out. I have no idea how to land this thing. And he goes, okay, you've got two options, kid. We have two runways that you can land on. You can land on runway A, which is about this wide, okay, runway A, or you can attempt to run, uh, you can attempt to land on runway B, all right? Now, which runway would you try to land on, A or B, if you've only been flying for a couple of days, you don't really know anything, obviously, you're going to pick B, right, because it has a bigger margin of error, right? You're like, well... If I mess up, it's, go it's not going to be as bad as if I try to land on A. So what I'm telling you is the average range, so if your stock low is here and your stock high is here, and if that's, say, 100 points, that's a 100-point move, and I'm saying, okay, I just want you to get 10 points out of that move, it's going to be easier to get a, a 10 points out of a 100-point move than it is trying to get, you know, going from, you know, 80 to 90 and saying, hey, here's what I want you to try to do. Try to get five points out of that move, out of a 10-point move. Does that make sense? So the average true range first, and usually what you want to do is look at the 14-period average true range, and on the dial, and this is just an old slide. It doesn't matter. They update every day, every 14 days, right? I've got an, a, a rolling 14-period. The dial moves about 93 points. The multiplier is how much it's multiplied times a point. So 93 points times $5 is going to equal plus or minus 465 points in that market. Now, that's if you get the dead high and the dead low. Does anybody in here believe that you're going to get the dead high and the dead low of that market every day? 
chances are slim to none that that's ever going to happen. I'm not saying it never happens, but it doesn't happen a lot, right? If you can get half that range, if you miss the first 25% and the last 25%, you'll be doing phenomenal, okay? So, and like I said, you could make or lose 465. S&P, 10-point range, $50 a point. You're going to make or lose $515 a day. Bigger ATR better. Most of the time, JD, yes, uh, but the multi what is the multiplier? The that you right, so the range is the points. The range is the point, and then every point is multiplied times five dollars. That's how much this thing will make or lose you. The S and P moves ten points. It's fifty dollars a point, five hundred and fifteen dollars. Nasdaq twenty five points, twenty dollars, five hundred and eighteen dollars. Russell only has a ten point range, but the point value is high of a hundred dollars, so you can make or lose nine hundred nine. $999. So not only is the ATR important, also the multiplier is, and then also the personality of the market. So these are what we call index futures. And as things go, the Russell's probably the better one to trade. It's a little bit herkier jerkier than the other ones, though. It's a little bit more crazy. Now, as a whole, these are how these four things trade. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. They're sprinters. They go run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. What exactly does E-mini mean? Electronic mini. So if you try to do breakout strategies with these things, it is like the number one way to just like burn crash. Has anybody been chopped up trying to trade the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and or Russell? Okay? Anybody? Almost everybody that tries to trade them gets chopped up because they're not the most trending instrument in the world. So they have decent, they have decent ATRs. Some of them have deficit multipliers. And you know, decent money over here, but they're so hard to trade because it's so it's they're they're sprinters, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. By the time you figure them out, they're going in a different direction. Now, the 30-year bond, which I'm going to teach you how to trade tonight, this is how this thing trades. It has about a point, 1.1 point, 1.15 points range. It's a thousand dollars a point. You're going to make or lose 1,150 dollars a day. All right. Now, here's how the bond market works. It goes up. And then it pulls back eight ticks. And then it goes up. Then it pulls back eight to 12 ticks. And then it goes up. And then it pulls back again. And then it goes up. And then it'll adjust. Which one's easier to trade? A or B? 30-year bond all day long is easier to trade than the E-minutes if you know how to trade it. Now you're sitting there going, whoa, 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 look at crude. I can make or lose 1830 a day. Yeah, you could. This thing is bipolar. It is like your crazy ex-girlfriend or your crazy ex-boyfriend. It's got 1.83 points of range, $1,000 a point. It's crazy to trade. Until you've got at least half a dozen years as a professional trader and you're consistently profitable, stay away from crude oil because it will just it will rip your head off and kick you while you're laying down. It's just hard to trade. Now, if you're profitable in some other markets and you want to dabble in crude, i got no problems with you going over there. It's just a tough market to trade. All right? So, Silver also, we call it the widow's maker, that and natty gas, because the contract is $5,000 $5, multiplier. Yeah, you could potentially make 3000 but you could potentially lose the 3000 too. Gold's another one that's really good to trade if you like strategies like this, where it goes break away, consolidate, break away, consolidate, break away, consolidate. That's how gold trades. When it's in a good trending environment, gold is very easy to trade. Multiplier is a function of the futures contract. That's exactly right. So if you're trading a stock, you know if it goes up a dollar and you got 100 shares, you made, you know, it's, it's a dollar move. On each one of these, each one of them have a different, different nominal value. So, yeah. How do we find ATR multiplier, for example, on the QQQ? The QQQs don't have a, you could find their ATR, but their multiplier is just going to be basically their pennies and their, and their points. ATR, if you guys hang around, I'll do live charts, and I'll show you a lot of live charts at the end. And we can look at the ATRs and a lot of different stuff. All right, so for the rest of the presentation, I'm going to teach you how to trade bonds, okay? Uh, QQQ is not a future. Yeah, they're ETFs. They're, they don't really have multipliers. All right, so we're going to talk about trading bonds and notes. And for this presentation, I'm just going to do bonds. And in particular, it's going to be the 30-year bond. Does anybody in here own a house? Anybody in here own a house? Anybody in here have a mortgage on that house? Probably a lot, right? Now, do any of you think that the mortgage rates are going to stay down here forever? 
or will they eventually rise? Right? They'll, they'll, they'll eventually rise, right? And they may start doing it as early as next year. If your mortgage rate goes like this, then the 30-year bond's going to go like this. There, that's your fundamental analysis lesson on how to trade bonds, okay? Now, I trade them both ways. I don't really care. I trade them technically. I <laughs> Never. Up, up, up. All right. So let's get into this. I'm going to show you how to hold a winner a little bit longer. So remember, what we're doing is first you have to recognize what is the ATR on something, and then you have to figure out are you, are you a sprinter trader or are you a marathon trader? So sprinters trade like this. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Breaking out. Psych. Got you, sucker. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Those are, that's A. All right? Marathon trades like this. Up. Pull back up, pull back up, pull back up, pull back. Or they'll do this up, consolidate, break away, consolidate, break away, consolidate. For me, the B's over here are a lot easier to trade. Just they're just a lot easier. All right. So let's go through each individual strategy here really quickly. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume no one in here knows what a futures market is. Okay, I know a lot of you do. But some of some of the folks in the room don't know. So I'm going to give you a a bond basics class. Now they trade almost the same way as the minis do, uh, the same months. Okay, so I'm going to go over the months. I'm going to go over the time, cautionary periods, symbols. I'm going to talk about tick values. I'll talk about dome, and I'll talk about margins. At the end of this webinar, you will know how to trade bonds with two different strategies, and you can pick whichever one you want to trade. One of them will be an overnight swing trade, and one of them will be a day trade. So I'll have something for everybody in the group. All right. All right, so let's get started here. The months of the futures contract are crazy. I don't know who was sadistic enough to come up with January is F, uh, February obviously is G, and March is H. So for the bond market, H, M, U, and Z are the contract specifications. All right. well, the bonds are just futures, are all they are. The 30-year bond is just a futures contract. Now, what that means is January is the F month. So here's how this works. So if you've never traded futures, go get you a futures count, call your broker, and he'll help you set all this up. So let's pretend this is 2014, okay? Now, in 2013, okay, what would happen is you have these months that you trade, H, M, U, Z. March is H, uh, M is June, September is U, and, and December is Z or Z. So in 2013, the contract month for the U.S., the 30-year bond would be U.S. Z 13. Now, we would trade that thing all the way until the second Tuesday of December. And then at that point, we would stop trading that, and we would start trading March of 2014. It really doesn't matter the year, right? It's the same thing. So then in 2014, it would be U.S. M 14. Okay? Does that make sense? And the second Tuesday of March, we would stop trading March, and we would start trading June, and June would be US M14. In the second Tuesday of June, we stop trading June, and we start trading September, which would be US U14. The second Tuesday of that month, we stop trading in September, and we start trading December, U.S. Z. 14. Has everybody got it so far? Now, the U.S. part is for trade station. Some brokers will do ZB, and some will do a different symbol. So it's really important for you to know which broker does what. Is U.S. H. and ZB. H. 14 the same thing? Yes, they are, Gary. It depends on the broker and the clearing firm it is. So U.S. or ZB will be the same thing. It sure will. And some people will just go like this. They'll just go uh, USM4, which means 14. They just take the one off. So depending on your broker. All right? So that's how it works. So basically, the maximum length of time that we can be in this trade is how long? Yeah, and, and, and TOS just goes forward slash ZB. So we can be in this thing for about three months is about as long as we can be in a swing trade. Then we got to roll back out of it. Okay? So if you're an options trader, think of it as the options is going to expire in three months. Okay, if you're a stock trader, you don't have to worry about that stuff because you can stay in it forever, right? All right, okie dokie. Now, this is what they look like. Uh, this market, the 30-year bond, opens up at 6 p.m. 
and closes at 5 p.m., okay? That is the electronic market, which means it's open 23 hours a day. That's not too shabby. So 23 hours a day is not bad at all. The open outcry opens at 8.20 a.m. and closes at 3 p.m., and that's East Coast time. That just means where those dinosaurs standing around the pit, those eight guys that still trade them, and they've got their screens, that's when they trade them. That's when the locals and the institutional traders trade in the pit. All right. Now, this, I've got a cheat sheet. I have a cheat sheet on everything that I trade. For this, it's all about the 30-year bond and the 10-year note, the 5-year note, and the 2-year note. So this is what it looks like. So this says U.S. You can see it trades 143 and 27 30 seconds. Yes, they trade in futures. Um, and you can see on this snapshot, there was about mm, 473,000 contracts traded. It, the start time, it starts at 6, closes at 5. The point value is $1,000 a point. The minimum move that it will move will be one that that thing moves. I'm going to either make or lose $31.25. All right. My little headset thing you came off here. There we go. All right. So that's how that works. So cautionary points. You need to be aware of interest rates. You need to be aware of any other major economic news releases and about the bond auctions and the note auctions. You can find this by just using a website called econoday.com, and you just look on there and see what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, economic news releases you have uh, pending, and you just want to make sure you don't just put a trade on right before an economic news release. Okay? Now, this is how TradeStation does their contract, and this is how Infinity, which is another program that I use, they say USH14, and these guys say ZBH14. Same exact thing. You just have to know that this broker says the 30-year bond symbol is US, and this broker says it's ZB. And if you're a Tosh user, forward slash ZB will be good enough. That'll actually give you a trade. All right? Now, the next slide here is the most important one. So pay attention to this slide. If you miss this slide, what, I, what I'm going to teach you later won't make any sense. So pay attention to this slide. No matter what you're doing, just stop real quick and just pay attention for like three minutes. All right. So this is the 30-year bond. We're going to pretend that you got long, L-O-N-G, at 135, okay? If you got long at 135 and your trade went from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, that's called one tick. That is a minimum move in the bond market, okay? One tick equals 130 seconds. That means... If you went from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, you would make $31.25. Does everybody got it? Now, if you went from 135 all the way up to 135 and 230 seconds, how much money would you have made? So that would be two ticks. So all you do is just do some simple math. Two times $31.25 is going to equal $62.50. Right? All right. Now, Remember, the bonds move 1.15 points a day. So you got the, the ability to make over $1,000. So if you went from 135 and you wrote it all the way up to 135 and 1630 seconds, and then it paused and it pulled back a little bit, and then it ran all the way back up to 135 and 3130 seconds, and then said, boom, 136, that would be considered 32. 30 seconds, which equals one full point, and one point in the bond market will make you $1,000, okay? Once you see the chart, you want to buy it, but your order can't get filled right away. <laughs> now, they are very thick. It's very easy to get filled on bonds. I'll show you tonight. I'll do a market order, and I'll also do a limit order right in front of you. Very easy to get filled in bonds. Very, very super thick. Any questions on this Slide, okay? Yeah. Very, very easy to get filled on bonds. Uh, you usually want to do limit orders, and you want to put them on a pending, pending order, though. Any questions on this slide on how the bonds work so that you don't have to risk your money? It moves in 130 seconds. Each tick is worth $31.25. They trade in fractions still. All right. All right. This is what it works on, looks like on a couple of different domes, all right? One on the left is trade station. They say 131 and 31, 30 seconds, 132. 131, 132, and 130 seconds. Infinity does a little bit different. They go 133.12 means 12 30 seconds. 133.13 means 13 30 seconds. 
That's the only difference. Where does the data come from, bond charts? Uh, it comes from on the, the bonds. It comes straight from the Chicago Board of Trade. It's still a Chicago Board of Trade. Yep. You got it. TOS. Well, I, I'm not sure how TOS does it. Uh, I think they do it in decimals, I think, but I'm not positive. Uh, can you use e-signal? I, I don't have e-signal on this one. Uh, it comes from the CBOE, not, or CBOT, not CBOE. Yep, CBOT. I do have e-signal. I just don't have it logged on. All right, let's talk about margins. So this is how you how much money you have. Here. Yes, TOS uses decimals. All right, margin intraday and overnight. Now, this is what's going to get you. This is an aha moment right here you're going to have. Okay? So intraday margin, you can get as little as 300 to $500 intraday. That means if you're going to be in a trade for, and you get out of it before those suckers close. Does anybody remember when they close? Remember, they, they close at 5 p.m. and they open back up at 6 p.m. There's your cheat sheet. These are EST times. All right? So if you're going to be in a trade and you're out of it before 5, your, your down payment on that contract to trade one bond is only going to be three to 500 bucks. All right, so... In the 30-year bond, it's going to cost you about $3,000 to hold it overnight. Now, the cool thing is I'm going to show you a little trick that you can do where you can use intraday margin when you're trading overnight because what you're going to do is you're going to wait. Let's just do this right here. If you did a trade and you entered it at 9.30 a.m. and you were out of it by 4.50 p.m., is that overnight or intraday margin based upon these rules right here? Is that going to be intraday margin or overnight? Intraday margin, right? Intraday. So it's a, it's a day trade. All right. Now, if you entered at 930 and you kept it till 510 p.m., overnight or intraday? Overnight, or, uh, overnight right? So now you got to have a little bit more money in your account if you're holding multiple lots, right? Okay. Now, let's say that you entered a trade at 6 p.m. and you are out of it the next day by 4 50 p.m. Is that overnight or intraday? Overnight or intraday? Oddly enough, for most brokerage, that's intraday. Now, how cool is that? You can be in a trade and you're, you get intraday margin of three to five hundred dollars, and you get 23 hours in a trade for that thing to just percolate, to just just simmer like a crock pot. Now, if you enter the trade at 6 p.m. right, and you hold that sucker till 5:10, that's an overnight trade for most people. Almost every one of them. All right, so you should get a little bit of aha from that, right? Let's keep on going. All right, here's the first trade setup. Get your pens and paper out. This is the first trade setup, first trade rule. A 30-year reversal trade. Now, here is uh, the power of this thing. The personality of the bond market is like this. It'll do one of three things, and it doesn't just always do this, but this is the pattern that it does a lot. It goes up. It pulls back eight ticks and then it continues, and then it pulls back eight ticks, and then it continues. Or it'll do this. It'll go up, it'll pull back 12 ticks, and it'll continue, pull back 12 ticks, and then continue, and then pull back 12 ticks, and then take off, pull back 16 ticks, and then continue, and then pull back another 16 ticks, and then continue. So for me, the, the two favorite that I like uh, – is the 8 tick and the 16 tick. Those are the two I do. Now, I do know folks that have a lot of success with the 12 tick, but I always do the 8 and the 16 tick, okay? So first and foremost, you have to figure out what the daily trend of the 30-year bond is, and that's pretty easy to figure out. I really don't even care how you do it. Use some kind of filter mechanism to tell you which way the bonds are going in a daily trend. Once you figure that out, what you're going to do next is you're going to buy an either 8 tick, a 12 tick, or a 16 tick pullback, and you are going to risk 5 ticks to make 32 ticks. Okay? Now, let's go through this. Reversal fade trade. Number one, let's just go through the rules step by step. Now, remember, this trade may only work four times out of ten. Or it may only work three times out of ten, but that's okay. okay. So I want to put this, I want to burn this into your memory. So do you see this trade that I actually did in one of my trading accounts right here where I shorted it here and then I covered it here? Does anybody know what that's cost? 
what that what what that is called when you short something low and you cover it higher. What's that called? When you short here and cover here, what happens? Some people call it a loss. I call it a deposit. The way I look at it is I'm depositing market into into the market. I'm depositing money into the markets that I will eventually get back at an inflated interest sometime in the future. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next month. I just don't know when. Once again, loser. Number two, loser. I lost 156 here. I lost 156 here. These are all actually trades that I took. Okay? Now, that is intraday, and I was like, all right, you got me twice today, Bonds. I'm going to give you that. I still think you're in a daily downtrend. I'm going to continue to short you. I'm going to let you open up here at 6 p.m. tonight, and then I'm going to let you sell off. And on an eight tick bounce, I'm going to short you. All right? So I let the market open up at six. It goes higher. I'm like, well, I want no part of that. I think it's going lower. I can't, I'm not doing anything about it. And then I let it sell off. Sells off. It bounces up eight ticks. I short it right here. I use a five tick stop loss and I use a 32 tick target. And what I do is I end up making a thousand dollars on that trade. It doesn't really matter. The time frame of the trade does not matter. You could use a one minute, a two minute, a three, four, or five. It doesn't really matter. We're talking price here, not time. So this is a winner. So if you made a thousand and you lost three hundred out of three trades, you end up netting about seven hundred bucks. Simple math, right? So out of three trades, that's not bad. And it costs me less than fifteen dollars if I'm paying retail commission, which I'm not. Actually, it costs me probably less than five dollars total for those commissions. Okay. So you see how cold it is now. You're probably sitting there going, eh, yeah, but you just got lucky, right? You just got lucky. Look how many times this thing worked, okay? So I had two losses over here. I could have shorted it on an eight-tick bounce here, an eight-tick bounce here, an eight-tick bounce here, an eight-tick bounce here. This one, if I would have shorted it, and I would have, I would have lost money on that one. But you still had one, two, three, four opportunities. Now, look. Obviously, I'm not going to do these. I'm in the I'm in the bed at this time because this is 6 p.m. at night right here. I place the trade. I put a five tick stop loss on. I go to bed. Why do you think I made so much money from here to here? What did I take out of What did I take out of the equation of this trade setup? What's the one thing that that messes with the trade every single time? Emotion, fear, greed. The the, the egomaniac behind the mouse going, okay, I'm just going ahead. I'm going to take the $300. You know what? Ah, 600 is good enough. Ah, let's take the 800 No, I'm in bed, snuggled up to my beautiful wife. I don't even know what's going on. right? I wake up in the morning and go, huh, that looks like that was a wild ride. Okay, I'll trail my stop down. I'll lock in some profits. So the next day, I come in. Now, let's go through this again. Here's a little bit more zoomed in. So let's go through the exact mechanics of what happened. I had the daily in a downtrend. The market opened up at 6 p.m. here. The market tried to do an eight-tick reversal here, but it just did not retrace eight ticks. It only got like six ticks. Then it made a low right here. And then I said, okay, that's the inter that's the overnight low. That low is 146 and 430 seconds. What is what is four plus eight? What's four plus eight? Because I want to let it bounce eight ticks. So that's twelve. So I'm going to short it at 146 and 12, 30 seconds. From that low, I'm going to let it bounce up eight ticks. Can large gaps hurt you? No, they're only, they're only down for 60 minutes. And this, that right there was the gap right there. The, the likelihood of you getting a huge gap up in bonds is very low because they're only closed for 60 minutes. Okay? And then what we do is we put a stop loss five ticks above our entry. What's 12 plus five? What is 12 plus five? Why five tick stop loss? Because that's my hundred and fifty six dollars. Because I'm I'm wanting to risk a very small amount of money. So seventeen. So my stop loss is seventeen. Now my entry is one full point lower, which is going to be one forty five and twelve thirty seconds. Thirty two ticks. So what happens? Next thing, I wake up in the morning. I had a stop of one hundred and fifty six dollars, which is way up here. And I was like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and trail my stop down. Lock in $375 and see what happens. And then about two minutes later, bing, I end up locking in my $1,000 as my target is hit. You can widen out your stop or you can widen out your target. Just trail down your stop. Now, don't choke it to death. 
Anybody in here a serial killer of profits? Like as soon as, like, oh, my God, I got a trade that's working. Let me trail my stop so tight that I just automatically get stopped out. Anybody ever done that? Anybody in there still do that? That does it a lot. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to trail the stop. Well, for the love of God, give it some room, right? Let it wiggle around a little bit. Don't choke it to death. Let it breathe. All right? All right, so that trade obviously has the two thumbs up seal of approval. Very easy, easy trade setup to do. So before I go to the next trade setup, do you have any questions on this one? You can do this in intraday, or you can also do it overnight. Can you do these on? Uh, can you do these on Virtue Trade? Uh, I don't know. Show the chart again. Show which chart again? This chart. Let me remove this. Let me remove the ink for you. There you go. Uh, can you do e? only one contract? Yep. How do you determine the entry and exit? You set stop losses at the same time. Yeah, at the same time. So as soon as I get filled, my stop loss and my target are automatically set. And I'll show you this tonight in live charts. Does this also work during the uptrends for those of us who can't short? Yes, yes. It works in both uptrends and downtrends. Like right now, the bonds are in a massive uptrend, so I've been going long them on pullbacks. It, this has an evil twin. It works on both down markets and up markets. In this example, you can see that we had a massive uptrend, so I was long bonds here until we broke this huge uptrend line, and then we started shorting bonds. Okay? So just think. Every point this thing drops or rises is $1,000. Are there day trading minimum account sizes? No, not Yeah, they are, but they're very low, like three to $5,000. Will you give a discount on the bond tool for setting the stops and entry in the dome tonight, please? Uh, Gary, call the office. Call the office. Susanna is right behind me, and so is Michelle. They'll take care of you. You talking about the indicator that I use so I don't have to do the math? You can call the office. They'll take care of you. All right, so no questions on that, and let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next trade is an intraday only trade setup. Now, we call this thing the sneak attack. So everybody right in here, sneak attack. Can you pull up live charts and go through it with us? Yeah, yeah, at the end, after I get through the sneak attack, then I'm going to show you the live charts, and I'm actually going to throw this trade on for you, and I'll show you a couple different ways you can do it. All right, so sneak attack is a trade that happens first thing in the morning. What do you use to determine the trend? I use Ichimoku or candlesticks. So in this example, what would you say that we are in? Are we in a daily uptrend or a daily downtrend right here? In this in this snapshot of this example, would you say that's an uptrend or is this a downtrend? I'd say it's a downtrend. Had one heck of a run, right? And then it broke the uptrend line, smoking to the downside, and it's getting hurt. So we want to focus only on the short side for this, on this example. We want to stay on the power of the side of the daily. Now, the times are important. This slide is wrong. It should be 820. You're going to start tracking the bond at 720 a.m., okay? You're going to watch it until 820 a.m., East Coast time, EST. Now, you don't have to start at 720. As long as you're here by 715 or 815, you'll be able to do this trade. You're going to mark the low from 720, and you're going to try to find the high and the low from 720 to 820. Does everybody see how I'm doing this? This is 720 at point one. This is 820 at point two. And we're just going to see where the market goes from point one to point two. Okay, there's our low, and then we have one, two, three highs here. Now, you have to do a little calculation. If it's 17 ticks or less, you can do the trade. If it's 17 ticks or greater, then you can't do the trade. It's illegal. I mean, it's illegal. You'll get a ticket if you do the trade. Not really, but you'll be breaking the rules, right? So how many, what's the tick range for our early bird range from 720 to 820? How many ticks is that? How, how much did that thing wiggle around that first hour? What's the high low? So the low is 145.21 and the high is 145.31. So how many ticks is that? How much did it move in that first hour that we're calling the early bird? Ten ticks, okay. So is ten ticks greater or less than 17 ticks? Less. So can we do the trade, yes or no? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, if it's, if it's, if, if it's 17 ticks or less, 
it's yes. If it's 17 ticks or more, it's no. All right. Now, remember, we are in a daily downtrend, right? So we want to focus on the short side. There's nothing wrong. If you want to buy the breakout to the high side, you can. You're just not going to like the results over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if this thing comes back through that low that was established from 720 to 820, we're going to short it if it goes below 145 and 2130 seconds. So right here is where we're going to short it at. We're going to use a five tick stop loss, which is $156.25. And then our target is the range. Yeah, 17 ticks is a rule of thumb, correct? What was the range for the first hour? Does anybody remember? How many ticks was it? How many ticks? It's right here. All right. Target one is 10 ticks. Target two is 20 ticks. And then target three can either be open or 30 ticks. I'm going to do one more illustration. Then I'm going to take Q&A. All right. So here's the 720, and that's the low. Here's the 820. There's three equal highs here. It's 10 ticks range. 10 ticks is less than 17 ticks. I'm good to go on the trade. I know I'm on a daily downtrend. I want to short it if it breaks below 145 and 21.30 seconds. Boom. I short it right here. My stop loss is right here, this red line. And then my target is right here. T1 is 10 ticks from my entry because my first hour was 10 ticks. Any questions on the sneak attack? And then we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the course. And then we're going to do live charts, and we're going to do this trade. We're going to do one here in a little bit. Let me put it on my trade tab right there. Oh, yeah, we can definitely do it. Can you go over it one more time again? Yep, I'll do it one more time. All right, one last time. Sorry about the crunching on the ice. All right, 720 is here, 820 is here. This is our first hour time zone. We're looking for our low, and we're looking for our high. So what we're doing is we calculate the high and the low. We can say that that's 10 ticks range. Since it's not bigger than 17 ticks, the trade's good to go. We know we're in a daily downtrend. Our low was 145, 21, 30 seconds. We're going to short it at 145 and 20, 30 seconds. We just put a line through here and go, okay, if the bonds during the day break below that low, they're probably going to continue going lower. My target is T1, is 10 points, or 10, yeah, 10 ticks, because my first hour was a 10 tick range. Ichimoku works to analyze timing. Yes, it does. Is it always five ticks and half the range for the stop loss? I always use about a five tick stop loss on the bonds. You, I assume, you're assuming a daily downtrend. Yes, I'm assuming a daily downtrend because this chart told us we were in a downtrend. If we'd have been in an uptrend, we'd have went long. Yep. If you hit T1 and you're up a tick or out, trailing stop. I usually, I usually uh, don't trail a stop too aggressively, Gary. I still leave that a little loose and I have an open target. All right, now you've got to have profits to have confidence. It is not confidence than profits. It's profits than confidence. Money management is key. You've got to have good entries. You've got to have good exits. And then with those will come profits, and then your confidence will increase, and then you'll end up adding more size. The more profits you have, the more confidence you have. All right? Now, you've got to have some good setups. Don't make them too complicated. Keep them simple. A good setup that goes executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. Good is good enough. Good is good enough. And what you want to make sure of is you don't try to filter out all the stop losses or the losers. You know, that's a sucker's game and it's for fools only. Enjoy the process. Work through it. You're going to have some wins and you're going to have some losses. It's part of the business. If you think you're going to make money without risking money, you're really, really, really under the wrong assumption. You have to risk money in order to make money. That's how trading works, okay? Now, I've got a class that a lot of people always ask me for, which is the number one question I get is, hey, what's your favorite trade setup? And at first it annoyed me, and then I was like, you know what? I should just do a course where I show people a handful of my favorite trades. Now, stick with me because we're going to do this live trade in just a second. So if you want that course, which I cover a handful of other trades that I personally like and do myself, here's the deal. So if I can get the slide to go, I'll start talking to you about it. So it's called My Favorite Trade Setups Now. It retails for $197. At the end of next month, I'm going to do a live Q&A after you have time to watch the course. 
And then I'm also going to do a live training session and show you how to do these live in real time. All right. So a value of $391 and a Stephen Bigelow special offer of $97. You can pick it up tonight for only $97. Deadline is for the first 25 people tonight. And or you can call the office at area code 859-963-3445. Area code 859-963-3445. All right. So you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash want. We trade with you for one day. Yeah, you'll trade with me for one day. Yep. So let me go through and show you what's in the course. And then I'm going to do live Q&A. And then we're going to do this bond trade live right in front of you tonight so you can do it. So when you click that link and it goes hubertcenters.com forward slash one, you'll add the cart, right? And then here's what you're going to see after you check out. There's seven different modules. Each module is about an hour, okay? Now, you can view these online in real time. As soon as you purchase it, you'll have access to the course. And then I also have live trading part one and live trading part two, okay? So these are pre-recorded live trades. I'm also going to do a live Q&A at the end of next month. And I'm also going to do another live trading session that I'm going to invite you to if you purchase it, okay? So here's what's in the course. Number one, you have a 100% satisfaction, no questions asked guarantee. If you don't love it, I'm not going to keep your money, and I always over-deliver. My, my, my promise to you is I'm going to give you 10 times the value that you invest with, okay? You will be pleased. All right, here's a couple of testimonials. This one's from Neil. I had a great day. I made net 1980 bucks on a short on the bonds and the gold. I was up 350 on three contracts on the YM on FOMC, but I held it too long and it came back. I'll be ready next time. I didn't have my, my orb up yet. Thanks for a great day trading. Hubert, I just wanted to say, as usual, you lived up to your word and uh, more than over-delivered on the course. I took technical analysis 101, Ichimoku, and my favorite trades course. Uh, just keeps getting the uh, teaching coming. Again, many thanks for your time and effort, Pete. All right. So here's what I'm going to share with you in the course. Are those setups for bonds? Y yes, the two trade setups that I taught you tonight is actually in the course. It's a part of the course. So, so in Module 1, it's all about stocks, and I teach you how to swing trade stocks and day trade stocks. Remember, when I first started this, I trade a little bit of everything, okay? And what I do is I pick my favorite trades from theirs, do I teach you how to trade? Yes, I, trade you, I teach you how to do the indexes, yes. So module two is stock, swing trades, and day trades. Module three is e-mini trades. I trade a lot of e-minis, all right? And gold swing trades and day trades, and then the bond swing and day trades. I taught you two of these tonight. So let's go through uh, and go through what's in the course, all right? All right, so module one, favorite ways to scan the markets for swing trades. And then I'm going to go through the best ways to scan the markets for day trades. And this is for stocks. And then I'm going to show you how to filter out the best trades to take. That's what's in Module 1. Now, in Module 2, we talk about swing trades on stocks and day trades. There's seven horseman trades. There are seven stocks that beat earnings 90% of the time. This alone I have sold for $97. Okay? There's seven stocks that beat earnings 90% of the time. There's also another seven stocks that beat earnings 80% of the time. Really good information to know around earnings. I'm going to show you how to trade stock gap plays. There's a really easy way to trade stocks that gap up and down, and you it's so simple, you'll be amazed how simple it is. All right? I'm also going to teach you the gap and go strategy on stocks. And let's see what else we got here. The gap and crap, we'll show you how to deal with that, where they just gap up and puke on you. All right, now let's go through module number three. Module three is e-mini day trades, where I teach you how to trade gaps on index futures. I teach you how to do the ambush trade, which is a 50% retracement trade. I walk you through how to fade trade. you got to know how to trade those sprinters. A lot of them are fade trades, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. And then I talk about the crescendo trade setup, which is a trade setup where it's almost like having tomorrow's newspaper today. All right. So that is Module 3. Now, Module 4, which it says Module 3, but it's obviously Module 4, is the famous Goodnight Gold trade where I show you how to risk $600 to make $6,000. I also teach you the Gold Rush trade and the Gold Bug trade. And then in Module 5, we go through the bond trades. I taught you how to do the 8 tick tonight, and then I taught you how to do the sneak attack on the 30, 
I'll also show you how to do them in the tenure, okay? So I taught you two of the minor variations of these strategies tonight. Your main charting tool is TradeStation, yes. So that is the offer. Here is the slide again for you. All of it is $391 value. First 25 people get it for $97. You can call the office. Here is the telephone number for you. Area code 859-963-3445. All right, there you go. All right, so now I'm going to zoom out of here. I'm going to quit trying to sell you stuff, and we're going to trade some. All right, so uh, you guys hit me with as many questions as you want. I'm going to walk you through the bond trade, okay? So for tonight, we first have to figure out where the bonds are. So this is the bond market. What would you say that market is in? Is this market in a daily uptrend or a daily downtrend? What's it look like to you? Uh, do you send out a DVD? I don't send out a DVD. As soon as you order it, you will have access to it. It's, it's online video. So let's go at US. All right. So you think this is a valid uptrend? Does everybody agree? Looks good, right? I mean, it pulled back today onto the turning line. But other than that, let's go walk through this bad boy. All right. So we're going to go over here to the Trade It tab. And then I know I want to trade the bonds. You see right here where it says U.S. means so far tonight there's been 1,835 contracts traded on that. I want to trade the U.S. U14 because it matches that. So I want to click that. And then what I want to do is there's a couple different ways that you can do this, okay? Now, I'm going to take this off of here. Yes, take all of my lines off. And then I'll make it just like a five-minute chart, okay? Now, that's a five-minute chart. We know we're in a valid uptrend, so all I have to do is figure out where my swing high is, okay? How long do you have access to the modules? Until I die, until I die, uh, which will eventually happen. I just hope it's not early, right? So the high so far, this is the 6 o'clock open. It ran up to 138 and 230 seconds. Does everybody see that? I want to buy an 8-tick reversal. I want to buy an 8-tick reversal. So all I have to do is go 138, 230 seconds minus 8. So... Believe it or not, I have an indicator that just calculates it for me. Um, turn off the phone in the background. Uh, Rock, I can't do anything about it. That's, that's all you guys calling to order this thing. Sorry. And there's two operators standing behind getting phones left and right, so I can't really do anything about it. Um, is this included a part of being an HSIC member? Uh, hmm, Dave, I don't know. You would have to call the office. I'm not sure what's included with that right now. All right, so we're going to count back eight ticks. There's a really easy way to do this. You see this right here where it says 138 and 230 seconds? You see this where it says 138 and 230 seconds? All I'm going to do is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. See how I did that? Yeah, I don't think it is, but you can call and ask. And then I'm going to go, I want to buy at 137 and 26, 30 seconds. Boom! There we go. Now, if I get filled on this order, my stop loss is here. And my target is there. You see how that's automatic? So it's automatically placed for me. Is this special for the videos or you trade or you time? Is this special for videos or you taking live? Uh, Nicole, you get the course, and then I'm going to do a live Q and A session at the end of next at the end of next month, and I'll also do a, uh, a couple uh, three or four hours of live trading for you too. Any questions on why I did it and how I did it? That's the, this is the standing order that I will keep open tonight looking to get filled on an 8-tick pullback. How did you determine the exit price? If I get filled at 137, 26, 30 seconds, my target is going to be 32 ticks or one full point. So if I go in at 137, 26, I'm going to go out at 138, 26. Got it? <laughs> you got it. Now, someone had a question, so I'm going to show you. They're like, well, you can't really. They're, they're, you know, they're hard to trade. Watch, I'm going to do a market order real quick. Watch out to happen. Three, three, two, one. I'm already filled. You see how quick that was? They're very thick. Look how many contracts are traded already tonight. This is the bid and ask on all of those. Now, if I did a limit order down here at 137, 23, 30 seconds, I would be number 665 in line. You understand how that works? Futures are first in, first out. So if I put a buy in at, at, at 137, 23, 30 seconds, I wouldn't get filled until those other 664 people got filled or those contracts got filled. But now notice, they're not moving crazy. 
Why did you pick the high? Why did you pick that as the high? If you did this trade an hour ago, that would have been chosen the high. Um, right. So I usually do it anywhere from six o'clock to nine o'clock. I hadn't done the trade yet. You could have very easily said that was the high. Not a big deal. It's only two ticks difference, right? It's only two ticks. It's not a big deal. Now I'm going to kill this trade because I don't want to be in this trade at this point. I'm going to close it out, and then I'm going to sit here and go. All right, this is the high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. All right, I got too many. Boom. There we go. My stop and my target are automatically put, replaced. Now, I will show you something really cool. Now, this is not included, but this is what I do for, uh, we do have the indicator, which is extra, but watch how cool this is. Watch. I can go right-click, format analysis, and I can go uh, retracement lines, and I can go, watch here. I can click this. I can go left-click, ding. And it'll tell you, right there's my entry. It'll say, your first entry is here. How cool is that? Your second entry is here. Your third entry is here. And then it goes, okay, there's your entry, there's your stop loss, and there's your target. It's pretty cool. I like doing stuff like that. It just makes my life easier. Uh, what is the entry price? I can't see it. Uh, 137 and 26, 30 seconds for tonight. 137 and 26 30 seconds. All right, that is the order that I have out there standing. Any questions on uh, my favorite trades or any of the bond the bond stuff I just taught you earlier? <clears throat> is the course is this course like your bond trading boot camp? Same thing. Uh, Eric, bond trading boot camp is way more involved. Uh, in my favorite trades, there's only two bond trades. Cooler if the tool writes the trade. Oh yeah, yeah, it would be cooler if the if the indicator just did the trade for you. Yeah, it would be cooler. Yep, I agree with you. <coughs> is there a mini bond? Unfortunately, there is not. But there is. There is a 10-year note and a 5-year note and a 2-year note. And as you can see, the, the, the ticks on these are smaller. So in the bond trading boot camp, I go through the 30-year, the 10-year, the 5-year, and the 2. The 5-year is $7.81 a tick. What if you think the ES is going up? Wouldn't bonds go going down? No, not always. It's a great theory. This doesn't always work that way, though. And here I'll show you why. So that looks like that's in a valid uptrend too, right? What's this look like? Uh, also an uptrend. Why'd you cancel order? I canceled order because I didn't want to do a market order. Eric, I was just showing somebody how you enter it really quickly. I'm still, I still have my standing order going up. Yeah. I still have, have the pullback. Um, so yeah, a lot of people will, will incorrectly tell you like, well, if the, if the, if the index futures go up, the bombs will go down. That is totally not true. A lot of times they'll just go in the same direction. What is your target? My target is right over here, which if I'm entering at 137.20 seconds, my target is 138.26.30 seconds. I think I saw the other day, maybe last week, was a bond settlement report. What do you think of it? Usually those don't move the market that much, David. Every now and then, I would say seven times out of ten, they don't do anything. If two or three times out of ten, they'll move the market. For retirement accounts, binary options can buy a put. Uh, tired of uh, tried or thought of uh, for a retirement account on an IRA. If you set it up as a trust, you can do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, so thirty-two ticks. If you set up your IRA in a trust account, you can go long or short all you want. You could do anything you want to do. Sir, I have a I have a seat uh, for the live trading room on Friday, but I find myself having to work. Will there be another day? Uh, yes, Tony, that'll also be recorded also, too. So, yeah, you'll be solid. Yep. So here is the link. And I'll also give you the telephone number because it sounds like lots of folks are calling. Here you code 859-963-3445. If you get voicemail, they'll call you right back as soon as they get off the phone. Uh, now you won't be filled until the other 600 and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, I won't. You're 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 correct. I won't get in unless I'm right now in 665th in line. That's fine though. Now you have to remember the overall psychology and personality 
of the bond market is it goes up, it's methodical, it pulls back, it'll feel me, and then continue on its way. Now, I am not under the delusion that, number one, I may or may not get filled tonight. And if I do get filled, that'll be a great thing. I'll probably make money. And if I do get filled and I lose money, I'm only losing $156. If you got filled on this trade, would you raise your entry price as, as a new high is made? Yes. If you don't get filled, yeah. So in other words, if the price action, let's say the price action went up here to like 135 and 830 seconds and I didn't get filled, then I would trail this up five ticks behind, or uh, eight ticks behind it. Yes, I would do that. If I was up, if I'm in the bed, I can't do that. So I would just wake up going, oh, man, I didn't get filled, and I would start doing it again tomorrow. So first thing in the morning, I'll do the sneak attack trade, and then I'd start doing eight tick reversals if I didn't get, get a sneak attack entry. Yep. Would you trail? Would you trail the stop? Nope. The reason I don't is what I've found over time is the tighter you trail the stop, the worse off you are. Now, I will tell you this: this is one of the better trailing stops. If you if you have a problem choking out trades, use a parabolic SAR on like a three minute time frame on the bonds, and you'll be pretty happy. I mean, they they work out pretty good. Like a three minute uh, parabolic SAR works pretty good on on bonds. And you just use this as long as your price is above the dot, you stay long. If it, if it drops below, you, you would get out. Parabolic SAR is one of the better built-in tools that a lot of people just don't use, and they should. Uh, Hubert, are you going to present at the New York Traders? I'm not going to New York, but I am going to Vegas this year. Yep. Uh, I missed this, but I know your work, and it looks like a great deal. I only trade options. Would this be good for me? Most of what I've seen, most of what I've seen is about bond trading. Yeah, Michael, try it. If you don't like it, I'll give your money back. I'm I'm um, very confident that you'll love the course. If you don't, I'll give your money back. I'd, I'd be surprised. Like, has anybody else in here take the course? Has anybody else? Who else in here owns my favorite trades? You can. I paid it. So any feedback whatsoever, you guys can say it's it's good, it's bad, whatever. Just tell them what you you guys actually think about it. Yes, I do, and it's outstanding. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So if you guys, I mean, if you, I I, I don't want to pump it up too much. I'm the one selling it. I have a I have a vested interest in you buying, and if you buy, I make ninety seven dollars, right? So obviously, I think it's worth it. I could probably charge way more for it. What I try to do is try to give you some really good information, very inexpensively, and I don't have a module on options on it, no. And um, and then if you like it, you can you can look at some of my other courses. Yeah. Uh, I am. What is the cost of the course? Ninety-seven dollars. Uh, won't start till September. Yes, it's good. I got it. Uh, do we need to buy other materials later in order to master skills? Nope. You don't have to. In the course, I try to make it a self-contained course as much as possible. Yes. Is the live trading room tomorrow, Friday? Yeah, I'll be in the live trading room tomorrow. Yep. For the couple hours. Yep. Uh, you gave a fabulous education some time ago. It was all about using Ichimoku. Do you have a site I can view that again, or will you present it? I'll present it at a later date. Uh, Black Sky Peck. If you call my office, they'll sell you that course right now. Uh, can I use E-Trade? Yeah, E-Trade trades futures. You'll be fine. They use, they actually, E-Trade licensed uh, TT Technologies futures platform, and you'll trade the minis and the and the bonds on that. What is the cost of the indicator? The indicator only comes with the bond trading boot camp. I have a couple of indicators. I have the sneak attack indicator that actually puts it on the chart, and I have the eight uh, the, the bond retracement indicator. That usually comes with the bond trading boot camp. That course is more expensive because all it is is it's just bonds. It's everything bonds. That, that one's either... Four ninety seven or nine ninety seven. It's a higher dollar course. Uh, your trade station written tools. Can you offer a toss version? Uh, I do have most of my indicators in toss. Don. Yep, I have most of them. How much money do you need to trade this? Uh, intraday three to five hundred. Overnight you're going to need three to five thousand. How do we access the live room? I just signed up for the program. Uh, AG, if you just send us an email, we'll give you access for it tomorrow. There's going to be, we're going to do another special live trading room for the end of the month for anybody that buys the course tonight. 
and we'll throw you all in the same room. So we'll just send you a registration link for it. How do we get access to live training? Just send a, yeah, we'll send you an, an email about that. Uh, do you ever add to the position as it's successful? Matt, yes, if it's a swing trade, I will pyramid into that position. If it's a swing trade, I'll pyramid into it. If it's a day trade, I, I go all in and scale out. Yes. What is the email address? Support at HubertCenters.com. S-U-P-P-O-R-T at Hubert Centers, H-U-B-E-R-T, last name's weird, S-E-N-T-E-R-S dot com. All right, is is this recorded as I got in link? Yep, they recorded. All right, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Uh, do you do options classes? Yes, we have options classes. This just doesn't have any options in it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, were you able to... Uh, are we able to ask questions about toss and other subjects into people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can ask whatever you want. We have a really good support staff here. And and oddly enough, if they don't answer the question, they usually hand me the phone and I answer the question. Uh, Hubert, on the eight-tick reversal trade, what is the objective of each trade, please? The objective is to buy a minor pullback, get in an eight-tick reversal, risk five ticks to make 32. The objective is to risk $156, $156 to make 1000 all right, Stephen, I appreciate you having me. Uh, thanks for putting on the webinar. I really appreciate it. Guys, have a great day trading tomorrow, and I will see you on the next webinar. Hubert, thank you very much once again. Very good stuff. And as you can see, everybody, this is straight to the heart of making profits. No, no fluff, uh, just common sense. So, Hubert, we enjoy your uh, presentations. Very good stuff. Everybody take a look at it because this is this is information that will help you make money. All right, everybody have a good evening. We will see you in the chat room.